A very good morning students we are in our practical lecture and this is structural geology and today's practical is on stereographic projections and that also for plotting a linear future and for this topic I refer the books the structural geology fundamentals and modern development by SK Ghosh structural geology by buildings actually I had made a special video on stereographic projection which deals with the primary principle and the laws that governs the way of projection as today's video is on the practical, you will skip this portion and I will give you a general recap uh, from our previous video. And if you want to know, you can just check this video. I will share the link in the description. So let us see this uh, equal area net, which is also known as the Smith's net, which we are going to use for our practical purpose. Basically, we will be placing a tracing sheet over this and we will be doing all such plots over on the tracing sheet. Okay. Let us see the parts. The first one is the primitive circle, which is the outermost circle in this Smith's net. So this is the primitive circle that actually surrounds the stereo net. The second part is the great circle that are the curved lines that connect the point from north to south on the stereo net. And actually this line is an uh, important line for which we are going to use for the measurement of angular relationship between any point okay so this line is called as the great circle and the third one is the small circles those are the highly curved lines that curve upward as well as downward on the stereo net you can see in the top uh, half that is in the northern hemisphere you can see all the lines are curved upward and here it is curved downwards so these are the primary three parts in the stereographic projection okay as the plot we can only draw one side of the sphere in this plot preferably the lower hemisphere the equal area and the equal angle net are equally satisfactory for many purposes in the structural analysis but the data plotted in the equal area net can be quite easily analyzed statistically so we are going to use this equal area net and when we are doing your practicals in crystallography, you might be using the equal angle net, right? And that also, you will be using the upper hemisphere. When a face is present in the lower hemisphere, you will be using to draw a hollow circle to project that face that is in the lower hemisphere. But in terms of structural geology, we are going to use the lower hemisphere. The a portion which the rock is lying on the surface that is in the lower hemisphere right so that is why we are going to use the lower hemisphere for the projection in this equal area net so let us see some basic principles that uh, this also will be uh, recalling a previous video a point on the sphere penetrated by the line is called a pole and the linear futures are plotted as pole in the net. So when you are dealing with the linear futures like uh, lineation marked by the stretched grain, lineation marked by the stricken slides, striations, all such a thing. Okay, we will be using the using to plot such a type of lineation as a pole in the stereographic projection, and that will be we will do a demo on this in our uh, today's practical class. Okay, and uh, planar futures. We used to plot it as an arc, which is also known as the cyclographic traces or just a greater circle. So these are the two main things that we can project in a stereographic projection. The one is the linear future and the second is the planar future. For linear future, we will do, uh, do this in our today's class. For the planar future, we will be doing sooner in the next video. Okay. As a general principle, the plane that dip at low angle were presented by greater circles having significant curvature and lying close to the primitive circle. So when you are dealing with the plane that is also having a low dipping plane, then the circle the, that will be marked as arc that is closer to the primitive circle. As you can see here, this is 0 degree. So if it is having lower degree, say 5 degree, 10 degree, 50 degree, low dipping uh, bedding plane, you will be using uh, to you use to draw curves that will be closer to this side okay whereas uh, steeply dipping planes are characterized by great circle having a minimal curvature and passing close to the center of the plot so if you are dealing with say a dip of say 60 degree 70 degree 80 degree those arcs will be passing closer to the center okay uh, and if you are dealing with the vertical plane 
that will be projected as a straight line passing through the center of the stereogram. So this line from north to south, this will be the line that marks the vertical plane. So if you are dealing with the low angle beds, the arc will be in this side or that side according to the angle of uh, so direction of dip uh, closer to the primitive circle. If you are dealing with the highly dipping beds, that will be closer to the central line. And if you are dealing with the vertical bed, you will be drawing a straight line. Okay. The pole of a plane. Okay. Sometimes we represent the plane by its pole. Okay. So what happens when you are doing uh, projections? You can make as arc when you are dealing with the bedding plane, right? The same arc can be plotted to a pole. That is what we are going to see now. Sometimes we represent a plane by its pole. The pole to a plane is the plot of the line perpendicular to the plane. Okay. So if you are dealing with the plane say which is dipping towards uh, east in this case. So the point will be on the opposite side that is the pole is on the opposite side. Say the dip of the plane is say 40 degree as you know the measurement is from the greater circle. So that 40 will be marked from the center towards the west. So this is how a pole should be pointed for a plane. For a horizontal plane the pole is in the center of the net as you know the plane is horizontal that is curving uh, that is in the greater circle so the pole should be at the center of the net and for gentle dipping plane the pole or near the center for the steeply dipping plane the poles will be near the edges that is in the near the greater circle and circle and the pole is always in the opposite quadrant of the greater circle so if the arc is in this side then the pole will be in its opposite quadrant. If the arc is in this side, then the pole should be in the opposite quadrant. So this is how the pole will be plotted. So you should know why, right? You will be having a question why we should go for such a type of plotting. Okay. So the answer is that the poles are used when plotting numerous great circles would make the plot cluttered and confusing. Okay. So when you are dealing with uh, so many uh, data of say planar feature like strike dip of a bedding plane, of uh, say actual plane and all such a thing. So marking in a stereo net will be a little confusing, right? So for such a thing, we will be doing uh, our uh, pole type of uh, drawing that is pole to a plane and this will be quite useful when we are dealing with a large number of uh, planar features. Okay. So let us get into the today's heading that is the method of construction and that is also for uh, plotting a linear feature. A line represented by a point on a stereogram. So when you are dealing with the planar feature, that will be point no, that will be marked as a point in the stereographic projection. So that is the first thing you should remember. So the very simplest geometric information one can display on a student is the orientation of a vertical line. So if you are dealing with the say second slides, and if it is if its trend is say totally vertical, that is standing erect. I, in a vertical fault in such a case what happens the line will be the linear feature will be plotted as a single point at the middle of the stereo net okay so this is the simplest thing which you don't want to measure anything you simply make a point on the center of the stereo net and that shows the linear feature is totally vertical is that clear okay the second easiest thing is that uh, information to portray is the orientation of a line that has trend due north to due south with the overlay in a reference position counting the amount of plunge from the either north or south index mark that is according to a requirement on the primitive towards the center of a net along north south line and place a dot on the trace paper at this position okay so if you are dealing with the linear feature which tend to say in north and the amount of flange is say 30 degree this is the example right so as you know this is the knot so you have to make a plot on this line and the amount of flange is 30 as you know the outermost circle that is the primitive circle is 0 and the center point is vertical that is 90 so as you move from the primitive circle towards the center the value gets increasing so this will be 0 the first will be the 10 then you will be having your 20 and this will be your 30 degree flange is that clear? So this is how we can plot the uh, easiest thing that is the trend is not and the plunge is third. Uh, trend is not and the plunge amount is 30 for a lineation. Okay. 
So we will go for a bit uh, more detailed thing that is say you are going to plot a linear future whose trend is say north 30 degree east and the plunge is say 40 degree. Okay, we will do simultaneously so that you can try it on yourself. So, so first step is you have to take a tracing sheet and you have to mark the northern line and all such a thing right. Then the first step is with the overlay the reference position mark make a mark on the primitive that corresponds to the trend of the line. So in this case the trend is not 30 east as you know this is not this is east. So by moving from here to here you have to count 30. So as you know the first the starting point is 0. This will be your 10. This will be your 20 and this will be your 30. So the first step is mark a point which is the trend of the lineation. Okay. Okay, the second step is that you have to rotate the overlay that is a tracing sheet over the stereographic projection uh, uh, towards any uh, straight line radius. Okay, as in this case I am near the northern radius as it is I have moved 30 degree. I will be moving towards my left hand side to reach the uh, radius of the stereo net. If you are somewhere here you can rotate it towards your eastern side or if you are somewhere here you can rotate it towards your south or wherever it is nearer to you okay so the second step is that rotate the overlay until the mark is aligned with the straight radius of the net so in this case i am rotating it towards the left hand side so my marking which is earlier here had moved towards the northern point okay the third step is simple that is count the angle of the plunge inward from the primitive circle along the straight radius and mark make a mark on it okay so here the plunge is 40 degree as you know the primitive circle is 0 and center point is vertical right so you have to move from 0 to 10 this will be 20 this will be 30 this will be 40 so this is the plunge you have to make a point here so this will be the 40 plunge right and that's it so just uh, return to a overlay and you can see this is how a trend of not 30 degree and a plunge of 40 degree a dipping lineation should be marked in a stereographic projection. Is that clear? If you have any doubt just mention in the comment section we will make a special or even detailed video to make it more explanatory and with this I am completing this class we will meet on the stereographic projection for a planar future in our next video. Thank you.